Imagine a game that never plays the same way twice, Nora. Sounds exciting, but isn't that a bit too random, Olivia? You might think so. But that's exactly what makes it interesting. The levels. Your character's abilities. Even the items you find are all dynamic. Generated as you play. Are you talking about procedurally generated content, then? Exactly, Nora. Now combine that with the concept of permadeath. Every failure is a reset from the beginning, with entirely different experiences ahead. Isn't that fascinating? Well, that does sound like a bold way to design a game. Hard not to feel the suspense. So roguelike games, it's a term that originated from the 1980 game, Rogue. Specifically, it's a subgenre of role-playing games that have a few distinct features. And Rogue essentially set the standard for this genre, right? Correct, Nora. It paved the way for a plethora of other games that now bear its name. The heart of a roguelike game lies in a few core characteristics. Procedural generation, permadeath, and typically, turn-based combat. Okay, the procedural generation aspect seems pretty clear. It's all about randomness and unpredictability, and we just discussed this. But permadeath? That sounds intense. Well, that's the nature of roguelike games, Nora. Permadeath basically refers to the lack of saving the player's progress within the game. If your character dies, you start over from the very beginning. A new world, a new character, new experiences. It can be a punishing experience, especially for unprepared players. So it's like, every playthrough is a high-stakes game with no scope for error? That's definitely a thrill, but also sounds quite daunting. True. And that's why the genre appeals to gamers who enjoy tackling a challenge head-on. And despite the brutal nature, it keeps the gameplay thrilling, and no two games are identical. Which only adds to the depth and intrigue of the genre. Olivia, has this formula remained the same since the days of Rogue? Or has the genre evolved? It's definitely seen changes over the years, Nora. Modern roguelikes have weaved in elements of action, adventure, and even platforming, resulting in a lot of hybrid genres that still maintain the essence of a roguelike game. Nora, have you considered what draws players to engage so passionately with roguelike games? Well, from what we've discussed, the unpredictability is definitely a key element. It's like a constant adrenaline rush. Every action and decision might lead to an unexpectedly brilliant result, or an untimely end. The risk might be high, but so's the payoff. That's right. The challenge roguelike games embody is intense, but there's an addictive charm to it. Let me explain. Each new game, every player will start from scratch, grappling with an uncharted realm. Yet, it's not daunting. It's invigorating. And if you couple that with the element of procedural generation, it means every playthrough is a new experience, right? Despite the same game, no two adventures are identical. Exactly. Different maps, various enemy positions, shifting biosystems. There is a distinct taste of novelty every time you boot up a roguelike game. And this constantly evolving gameplay forms the ladder to replayability, engaging players repeatedly. Sounds thrilling. But how does that translate into a sense of accomplishment for the players? I believe it's the journey, Nora, not the destination. In roguelike games, players outsmart obstacles and unravel enigmas that are never identical in the exact same gameplay environment again. Yet they persist, learn, adapt, and finally triumph. That resilience, that victory over adversity brings about a profound sense of achievement. That's not something you see in many other genres. And it's this uniqueness that keeps attracting gamers to the roguelike lands, tying them into this enchanting game world. Even when the victory's fleeting, the jubilation of inadvertently crafting your own narrative is unparalleled. I want to talk about moments that stand out in our roguelike gaming journey. For me, with Spelunky, it was that first time I got past the game's complex traps and found the hidden city of gold. The sense of achievement was phenomenal. Nora, do you have any such memorable experiences? I can see why that would be exciting, Olivia. While I haven't played Spelunky, I did dabble with a game called Dead Cells. I distinctly remember feeling completely lost and vulnerable during my first run. But then, as I slowly began to understand the combat mechanics, 
It was fascinating how I started predicting enemy movement patterns. Almost like a dance, you know? Oh, absolutely. Roguelike games have a knack for transforming us from clueless explorers into experts of strategy and timing. The elation you feel when navigating an unfamiliar world successfully, it's truly magical. And it's that sense of achievement that's motivating, right? Procedural generation ensures there's always new land to explore. There's always strategies to refine. It requires a mix of learning, adapting, and improvising at every playthrough. It's a dance, like you put it earlier. One with high stakes, adrenaline, and gratification. It's in these games that I've felt the most exhilarated and triumphant, and just the opportunity to confront the unique challenges they pose. That's what keeps me hooked. What say, Nora? Well, every run in a roguelike game is like solving a new puzzle. Sure, it's challenging and at times overwhelming, but that's the beauty of it. You're constantly learning and driving your own gaming experience. Now, when it comes to our chosen game for today's deep dive, Spelunky, the brilliance lies in its ever-changing world. Each playthrough offers a unique experience, because every level is procedurally generated. This means the traps, treasures, and even the enemies you encounter differ with each run. There's an element of freshness that regularly keeps players on their toes. That's incredible. But it also sounds like you'd be constantly navigating in the dark since no two games would be the same. Does it get discouraging at any point, Olivia? Actually, Nora, it's the complete opposite. Sure, it's difficult, but each failed run teaches you something new, making you more prepared for the next one. The game encourages learning through trial and error, which I believe is an essential part of the roguelike charm. So, apart from the excitement of unpredictability, what do you think is unique about Spelunky's design and plot? Good question, Nora. Beyond the ever-changing environments, there's an underlying depth to Spelunky's gameplay mechanics. It's not just about getting from point A to point B. Each level holds concealed pathways and hidden treasures, including the elusive City of Gold I mentioned earlier. The real mastery lies in exploring these lesser-known aspects and fully understanding the game's mechanics. This game seems to offer both variety and depth. Does it feel overwhelming at times, given its constant element of surprise and the need to continually adapt? It may seem overwhelming initially, but this is where the element of player growth comes in. As you adapt your strategies based on each playthrough, you become more familiar with the mechanics of the game. The unpredictability gradually becomes a part of your learning curve, aiding your journey from a novice to an experienced player. Switching gears to another gem within the roguelike realm, let's talk about Risk of Rain. This game puts a whole new spin on the genre, wouldn't you agree, Nora? You've got that right, Olivia. Thinking about Risk of Rain, there's plenty to dive into, especially in how it uses procedural generation. But, I wonder, how does it compare to Spelunky? Ah, that's where it gets interesting. See, Risk of Rain still has the same elements of randomness and player growth inherent to a roguelike game, but its focus is not on exploration. Instead, it's about survival against mounting odds. The more time you spend on a level, the more the difficulty increases, and you're constantly bombarded by enemies. Here, the procedural generation is primarily used to generate different types of enemies and the items that they drop. There are over 100 unique items that you can collect in Risks of Rain, all with different benefits and unforeseen gameplay implications. But isn't that surprising? Rather than the map layout, the focus is on items and enemies. How does permadeath feature in this? It's again that same roguelike principle of permadeath, but with a twist. When you die, your playthrough ends. But any items you've collected along the way unfortunately don't carry over to the next run. However, the types of items that can appear in your future, runs do get affected by your previous runs. That means the longer you survive, the better the potential rewards in your future runs. It offers a fantastic sense of progression, despite the looming threat of permadeath. So it's about playing the long game. Fascinating. I imagine this shifts things from an exploration focus to a strategy and survival focus. It demonstrates the adaptability of the roguelike genre and the creativity of developers to create these variations. 
Can we discuss puzzles and their role in roguelike games, Nora? I'd love to, Olivia. You know, puzzles can be a huge draw for gamers. They offer a chance to flex mental muscles. And in roguelike games, their dynamic nature can give a sense of accomplishment. Exactly. And it's not just the mental exercise. The beauty is that the more you play these games, the more efficient your strategies become, even when you're facing new situations every time. It's challenging, rewarding, and infuriating in equal measures. Infuriating is the right word, I think. I remember playing Spelunky, and there were times I wanted to hurl my keyboard out a window, but I couldn't stop playing. Why do you think these games draw us in? It's the learning curve. While the landscape changes and the challenges vary, the gameplay mechanics remain consistent. We subconsciously amass this wealth of knowledge which guides us in our next runs. A good roguelike teaches without holding hands. Like an invisible tutor. Just thinking about that makes these games more intriguing to me. But I've always wondered, this format of game with permadeath and all, does it attract a wide range of players? Well, roguelike games usually attract a particular type of gamer, Nora. It's not for everyone. It favors those who relish the grind and find joy in overcoming tough challenges. Essentially, gamers who consider failures as merely stepping stones to success. So you think player feedback plays a significant part in roguelike games? Absolutely, Olivia. Gaming is an interactive experience and developers often rely on user feedback to refine their games. More so in the roguelike genre where games are non-linear and procedural. That's true. Consider Spelunky, for instance. The developer sent out a prototype for free, used that feedback to refine it, and the result was a game that had players hooked because they had a hand in shaping it. Doesn't that mean more work for developers? Contrastingly, Nora, the interaction often fuels innovation. Think about how the developers of Risk of Rain implemented the concept of stacking items based on player feedback. It was initially unintended, but it became a mechanic that defined the game and its sequel. That's fascinating. So feedback didn't just modify the game, it defined it. Exactly. And the best part is that these games aren't just shaped by their developers, but also by their community. When you play them, you aren't just playing a game. You're contributing to its evolution. When it comes to player engagement, the community response is the goldmine of ideas for the devs. Hasn't it been so in case of Spelunky and Risk of Rain, Nora? Certainly, I think both these games have a vividly active community. Their contributions have been pivotal in shaping the games. That's so true. You know, it's empowering for the players to know that their experiences and input can actually help mold the games they love. I remember a suggestion in Spelunky's community platform about incorporating more varied traps. Ah uh, yes, isn't that when they included arrow traps to the initial levels to provide a startling yet entertaining challenge to its players? Exactly. That was a significant change. Also, let's not forget Risk of Rain. The community had opinions about the item drop rates, didn't they? I'm not entirely sure about the drop rates, but the concept of item stacking was something born out of community feedback, wasn't it? Absolutely. It was such an impactful influence. This kind of player feedback gives these games a sense of depth and co-creation that's hard to replicate elsewhere. You know, Nora, when you really get into the nuts and bolts of it, the technical aspects of roguelike games are simply fascinating. Take procedural content generation. It's a real game changer. No pun intended. Well, Olivia, I can understand its allure. Isn't procedural content generation essentially a way of creating game data algorithmically rather than manually? Sort of randomized layouts of dungeons and different enemy spawn points each time you play, right? Precisely. Now, imagine trying to code for that. It's a creative process that's more abstract than concrete in some ways. Still, it's very much a back-end operation that leads to fascinating front-end results, like no two gameplay experiences being exactly alike. It fundamentally changes the game design, making every playthrough unique. Interesting. But isn't it a bit of a double-edged sword? While it ensures freshness, doesn't it also make things way more complex, especially for the developers? That's a fair point, Nora. It indeed adds a layer of complexity for developers. But honestly, 
that is also where the thrill lies. However, we're focusing on only one aspect of these games. What further drives their uniqueness is the concept of permadeath. Ah, permadeath. No second chances, right? One life and you're done. But doesn't this make things terribly frustrating for the players? It can seem that way at first, for sure. However, permadeath fundamentally alters the player's approach to the game. It adds real consequences to their decisions. Every risk taken, every move made is weighted with this constant tension, and victory then becomes so much more rewarding. Nora, keeping the environment changes along with difficulty balance in mind during roguelike game development is quite a challenge. The developers have to ensure that the game's random algorithmically generated elements do not become too complex or too trivial, maintaining a sense of mystery and intrigue without overwhelming or underwhelming the player. That sounds like a delicate balancing act. There must be some form of parameters or constraints, right? I mean, can a game really be fully random? Good question, Nora. It's not entirely random. Game developers use a technique called controlled randomness, where they set certain guidelines for the procedural generation to follow. This might dictate the pattern, size, or difficulty of random game elements, providing a balance between total predictability and complete chaos. Controlled randomness, huh? Now that's an interesting concept. It's like they're setting boundaries, yet within those boundaries anything can happen. But I wonder, does this level of unpredictability make the game design process more arduous or complex? Oh, absolutely. It's a mammoth task to create, test, and perfect these algorithms. Not to mention, finding the right balance where the game is engaging yet challenging but not too frustrating for a player can be quite tricky. The aim is to create a cyclical play experience, where the player is motivated to play again after dying, drawn in by the novelty of a new run. Yes, it makes sense. Since every run is unique, the player would want to try again and again, hoping for a better outcome. And maybe, just maybe, they'll get the perfect elements that make the game slightly easier for them. It seems permadeath, despite its fluidity, does add an extra layer of complexity to these games. Exactly. Players learn from their past gameplay experiences, develop strategies, and then adapt to new circumstances in subsequent runs. That's the beauty of roguelike games. They offer endless replay value, evolving gameplay, and an exciting sense of spontaneity, keeping players on their toes at all times. Nora, how about we talk about community and culture surrounding these roguelike games? That sounds interesting. Gaming communities are a big part of what makes or breaks gaming genres, aren't they? Absolutely. The roguelike genre and its community offer a unique case. Developers and players work closely, their interactions shaping the evolution of these games. And you know what's fun? The community doesn't limit itself to serious game discussions. They also indulge in humor and folklore. Folklore? What could that possibly be about? Well, as with any community, they have their inside jokes and stories, often based on shared experiences within their gameplay. Remember permadeath? Yes, the feature where once a game character dies, it's gone forever. Right. So a lot of times, players take to forums and share their epic tales, but also tragic comedy stories about their characters meeting wildly unpredictable permadeath endings. They can include ridiculous mistakes, ill-timed strokes of bad luck, or heroically failed last stands. These stories become a part of the community folklore. Oh, that's a colorful way to process their experiences. And about humor? Gameplay memes, mostly. Hilarious banter related to character deaths, twisted game mechanisms, inconvenient potion effects at the worst possible timing, you name it. They share these, let's say, rituals of failure, which create bonding experiences rooted in frustration but morphed into humor. So there's shared frustration, humor, and storytelling. Any formal gatherings like gaming conventions? Indeed. Roguelike-specific conferences like IRDC, International Roguelike Development Conference, do take place. Developers, scholars, and enthusiasts gather, presenting talks, discussing design aspects, sharing ideas. It's quite a unique atmosphere, fueled by their passion for these games. All right, Nora. 
let's teleport ourselves into the future. Where do you see the future of roguelike games headed? First off, I think we'd witness more merging of roguelike elements into mainstream game genres. Consider popular games with roguelike elements like Enter the Gungeon or the recent Hades. They're employing these elements to refresh traditional genres, and people are loving it. That's certainly very valid. The core appeal of roguelike games resides in their unpredictability and constant challenge. Including such aspects into mainstream games can surely provide unique gaming experiences. But what about the potential of these games on other platforms, like mobile or VRAR? Mobile gaming has experienced significant growth over the past few years, and I don't see why roguelike games wouldn't tap into that potential. Although currently, many games are PC-based, the portability and ease of access that mobile games offer could attract a wider audience. True, and with improving computational abilities of mobile devices, complex procedural generation might soon be possible on our phones too. Then, we'd essentially have roguelike games on the go. But what intrigues me more is the potential of roguelike games in the realm of VRAR. Imagine physically navigating through a procedurally generated dungeon, or virtually encountering permadeath. It does sound incredibly intense, doesn't it? It does. But creating such an experience could be a real challenge for developers considering the complexity and technical aspects required. However, if achieved, it would certainly elevate the gaming experience to another level. Absolutely. The future certainly looks exciting. Only time will tell where the innovation leads. But one thing is for sure. Whatever the platform or the method, the unique, heart-throbbing essence of roguelike games will continue captivating gamers and driving the growth of this genre. Permadeath, Nora. It's a unique component of roguelike games, isn't it? They don't offer any second chances. One false step and poof, your character is gone forever. How do you think this impacts the player's mindset? Well, Olivia, the concept of permadeath certainly instills a sense of caution and strategic thinking in the player. To avoid losing their progress, they're likely to plan their actions more carefully. Also, the stakes are higher with permadeath in place, thus resulting in a more intense and immersive experience. This means every decision, every move carries a significant weight, fostering a deep level of engagement. But this could also increase the player's stress levels, couldn't it? I mean, the constant threat of losing everything and having to start over can't be easy on the mind. What's your take on this? You're onto something there, Olivia. There's a delicate balance to strike between challenge and stress. Roguelike games can indeed be stressful, but on the larger scale, games are often seen as a form of escapism or stress relief. So it's crucial that game design doesn't tip the balance too much causing the game to become more of a stressor than a relief. That makes sense, Nora. Plus, the aspect of uncertainty due to procedural generation, not knowing your surroundings or what's around the next corner, magnifies the intrigue and the feeling of adventure, even while heightening the pressure. However, this package of unpredictability and challenge is exactly what appeals to the players, giving them a fresh experience each time they play. Moreover, I believe rewards in roguelikes also play a significant role. Even though the punishments can be severe, the satisfaction of achieving something difficult can be immensely rewarding, balancing out the stress induced by permadeath and constant surprises. Would you agree? Yes, the reward-punishment system of roguelike games might be one of their biggest draws. Overcoming obstacles and solving complex problems can have a powerful impact on players providing them with a sense of achievement and mastery. It's all about striking the right balance between stress and satisfaction, keeping players on their toes while ensuring they find gratification in the challenges they conquer. Delving into aesthetics, Nora, roguelike games have a distinctive art style, don't they? Oh, absolutely, Olivia. It's enchanting in its own right. Spelunky, for instance. Its pixel art throws us back to the era of 16-bit gaming. The visuals, varied and vibrant, are a treat to eyes, yet keeping gameplay engaging. True. And while we are on it, Risk of Rain 2. The game uses pixel art, but in its perspective. The characters may look small on the screen, but each has unique and detailed design aspects. 
these designs are further complemented by specially tailored soundtracks. The impactful sound effects in both games enhance the immersive experience. Be it the fizzling out of a torch in Spelunky's dark levels, or the dreadful drone when Rain's difficulty level increases, every beat adds to the ambiance. Agreed, and when mixed with their unique playstyles, it's a captivating package. But it's not all about these aesthetic elements. It's about the incredible adventures they support. Every playthrough feels fresh because you're always attempting to surmount a newly generated layer of randomness, which only heightens with permadeath holding the reins of suspense. Couldn't agree more, Nora. The combination of complex mechanics, procedural generation, and unique aesthetics of these roguelike games ensures that every dive into their world is an exhilarating and unique experience, one that keeps drawing players back. As we continue to explore this captivating genre, expect more fun and excitement. We have much more in store for our next episode, delving into another riveting theme from the gaming world. So stay tuned for another geeky adventure next time. Absolutely, our dive into the world of roguelike games has come to an end for today. We had an insightful discussion and we hope it resonated with listeners too. So, until our next escapade into the realms of unique PC games, keep gaming and exploring. This is Nora. And Olivia. Signing off but not without reminding you that every game teaches us a new tale, makes us characters in a carefully crafted narrative, and above all, lets us create our own stories. So, game on, folks.